did you feel like you were getting any kind of negative label by being on the edge and kind of not being able to put together a huge winning streak to, to push through? Because one conversation I remember often is uh, Rashad Evans calling uh, Mike Whitehead a, you know, a gym warrior, mm -hmm. one of those guys who is unreal in the gym but can't pull the trigger, can't put together that winning streak. Did you feel like you were getting labeled that way, or was that unfair? Or uh, I've never heard any, any talk about people saying that I'm a gym warrior and not able to perform. Yeah. Look at my record. Mm -hmm. My record will say I, I finish people in fights. That's, that, I think that stands for itself. Uh, as far as a gym warrior... Do you, uh, think there, do you think there are guys like that who, for some reason, under the spotlight, don't perform the way they do in the gym? Uh, yeah, I think I've been there a couple of times. You know, like Maybe even this last fight, I should have pulled the trigger a little more. I should have... I should have punched Chris in the face a little more, you know, and tried to be a little more aggressive. But, you know, I did what I needed to do to, to win the fight. It could have been a little uh, boring at times. I've, I've looked at the fight, and I was a little unhappy with, with uh, bits and pieces of my performance. But, uh, and you know, I, I just look back at the fight, and, and I say again, you know, I, I was able to put away a guy that everybody's went the distance with and, and contenders for the belt has not even been able to put him away. So, Well, and you, you know, it's an interesting time right now, 170, because – it looks like guys can come from the outside, even as deep as the division is. And if you put together three wins, you actually could get a title shot, which I don't know if that was possible two or three years ago, but the division is so wide open and the guys at the top kind of keep knocking each other off and something happens and injury. So it's a weird time. If you, I mean, I think case in point, we, you know, uh, Martin Campman's one of your gym mates, but Paul Daly all of a sudden out of nowhere puts himself in actually in the discussion. If he gets another big win, Maybe he's an intriguing guy. Well, I mean, he also has the advantage of the U.K. thing, but yeah. it is possible. It, and anything's possible, you know. Uh, UFC knows, like I say, the UFC knows how to put together fights. They know how to, uh, they know how to put guys in there to, and that can be potential champions. And then, you know, they have a, uh, they have an eye for it, and they, they know, they know what's going on, and uh, they'll keep the guys around that they need, and they'll get rid of the guys that they don't, and that's, uh, you know, that's the reputation that they have, and. Uh, I plan on being one of those guys that's going to be that's going to stay around. You know what I mean? And there's not a 70, there's not a 170 in UFC that I don't think that I'd be able to 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 contend with. So, do you have a guy in mind? A couple of names? No one? No, no, no. Yeah. Just uh, I won't just want to get in there and fight. You know what I mean? I wouldn't mind having a little redemption from my boy Campman and maybe fight Daly. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He's you know I believe it's a good matchup for me and Daly. Uh, Whoever, yeah, I'm not calling out any names. Just, right. just whatever. Uh, I, I want to fight. So, just whoever they give me, and whatever. So, before that Larson fight, we heard about the movie you had done. I don't know that it got a whole lot of coverage. So, tell us where you were, what you were doing, and kind of how involved you were in that movie. Uh, I actually went to uh, Sofia, Sofia, Bulgaria, the capital of Bulgaria, and was shooting a film with uh, director John Himes, who put, uh, who did Smashing Machine. Right. With uh, the 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 Mark Kerr thing, uh, it's called. It was a uh, Universal Soldiers Three, uh, Dolph Lundgren and uh, and Van Dam were are back again, and uh, I had to, I had the uh, opportunity to be back with the uh, w with the high kicking, whatever you want to call them, Van Dam. So whatever, uh, and uh, Andre Olowski was in it as well. So uh, there is a. Uh, some interesting scenes in there I got to got to do and uh, it was pretty cool man uh I don't it's not every day a boy from a trailer park gets to go and you know be in a movie with Van Damme you know one of my I wouldn't say heroes but I watched a hell of a lot of his movies yeah. growing up you know what I mean and every time it was over I thought I was Van Damme I'd go around kicking <laughs> kicking my buddies and whatever you know what I mean so so did you get to mix it up with him or uh, Dolph Lundgren uh, I had no scenes. I had no scenes with him. Uh, there, I'm sure there'll be a few scenes that appears that were in the same uh, in the same area, but it's just all Hollywood stuff. We're, right. we're not really there. Um, but uh, there, there is there are several scenes you'll get to see me, and I had I had several scenes in there. I play a uh, soldier for the U.S. Army and Captain Kevin Burke, and uh, so I'm in a, I'm in a lot of scenes, some war scenes, some fight scenes. No love scenes. Ah, there you go. But uh, <laughs> so yet, right? no. <laughs> but, so for something like that, do you make more money doing that or fighting? Uh, well, I'm not uh, gonna ask you the number, but in uh, general, I made like one million on that film. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just like, wow, kidding. Okay, well, I don't know why you're. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, for the first time, I, I thought I was compensated well. Yeah. Um, 
is definitely up there with what I get paid. It depends on if I, if you want to know if I get paid to show and win or if I just get paid <laughs> to show and lose. Uh, and the reason I ask, obviously, I don't want to make the, the transition to what's going on with Rampage right now. Um, you know, obviously, uh, Rampage is an accomplished guy. He's got a little disagreement right now. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that bug is out there that the potential is there for money in TV and movies. Um, but you have to find a way to kind of mix it with your fight career. So uh, Rampage, yeah. you know, annoyed UFC a little bit. Yeah, you know, uh, God, God bless Rampage. I, I, you know, I know, I know where, where he comes from uh, and uh, how accomplished he is now, and, you know, uh, He's come a long way. Uh, I feel I've come a long way too with my roots. Uh, to get an opportunity to go and do a film like that is, you know, is awesome. You know, it's not an everyday. It's not every day that, you know, that an opportunity comes up. Someone says, "Hey, we want you in our movie." You don't even have to go and read for it. You know, there's th there's thousands of actors that are out there that are going to readings every day and they're not getting jobs. And I get a call. Just says, hey, we want you in the movie. There's nothing. There's no reading. There's nothing. We throw you on a first-class flight to Bulgaria. You're in the movie if you want to be. And all you have to do is say yes. Uh, you know, and to juggle both, uh, I don't know. You know how hard that would be because I just so happen to have time off for that. Uh, do I want to pursue an acting career? Yes, I, I definitely will. Yeah. If you know, I don't have my fingers crossed. I'm a fighter first, first and foremost. I'm a fighter. Have been for years. Uh, do I know I can be an actor and be successful at it and make a living? I, I have no idea. Yeah. Can I be a fighter and be successful at it? I got a pretty good hunch that uh, I can. So, you know. So you're like a you're like a Kit Cope type. Watch your mouth. <laughs> Watch your mouth. <laughs>